It's almost like it's been there forever. Grandfather Mountain, the granddaddy of North Carolina tourist attractions. Nearly everybody in our state remembers a trip to Grandfather sometime in their lives, or certainly recalls having seen a picture of, or by, Hugh Morton, the man who shared his mountain with the world. Grandfather Mountain has been in my family for over 100 years. Recently, however, Grandfather Mountain has undergone a significant change, one that will secure the enjoyment of its natural attractions for future generations and help carry on Hugh Morton's legacy. Grandfather Mountain is going to be preserved in perpetuity in its wild natural state. In 2009, 2,600 acres of backcountry grandfather became a North Carolina state park. The for-profit company that once managed the mountain has been transformed into a nonprofit, the Grandfather Mountain Stewardship Foundation, and will continue to manage the iconic features that the attraction's 250,000 or so annual visitors picture when they think of Grandfather Mountain, right beside the new state park. Grandfather Mountain State Park will be unique from a lot of state parks. You're not going to drive through your typical front gate of a state park like your typical entrance. We've got two accesses to the backcountry trails. One is at Boone Fork parking lot, which is actually on the National Park Service property along the Blue Ridge Parkway. The other one is along Highway 105 outside of Fosco that will be operated completely by the state park. Hikers seeking the backcountry experience will pay no fees, and there are no organized facilities like camp or picnic grounds. Visitors who wish to drive to the top of Grandfather will pay the entrance fee as usual at the front gate along Highway 221. Sweeping views draw visitors up the mountain, where most often the destination is the spectacular mile-high swinging bridge. Grandfather Mountain also is known for its wildlife habitats that show off native species in their natural settings. And it's that natural setting that people come to see. On a clear day, Charlotte's tall buildings are visible in the distance. Grandfather Mountain is the most spectacular mountain in the southeast United States. There are higher mountains in North Carolina, but there are none that are as abrupt and as dramatic as Grandfather Mountain. We just rise so quickly that our views are true 360 degree views. In addition to just the landscape, uh, this is a really unique place in terms of the combination of plants and animals that live here. It's in the backcountry where you will most likely encounter these unique mountain inhabitants. And naturalist Jesse Pope, it seems, knows them all, plus just about every rock and crevice on Grandfather's wild side. So when you're hiking up the profile trail, you'll encounter a lot of different ecological plant communities, but two of the most obvious are the cove forests. The first one was a Mesic Cove, a Dutchman's Pipe Cove. Very lush, uh, lots of mosses, very moist, lots of herbaceous plants that occur there in the valley. But once you step out of the Mesic Cove across the ridge into an acidic cove, you'll notice a lot of rhododendron, much less understory herbaceous plants. Another very interesting habitat type on Grandfather is the boulder field forest. A lot of water flows underneath the boulders, and after a couple rainy days, you can hear the water flowing even though you can't see it. Something else that's kind of neat there is the trees. Um, you can see these really, really long root structures that are going over boulders just to reach what small amounts of nutrients they can get from the soils. Well, this is what they call a metaconglomerate wall. This would have been formed in a stream bed in a mountain formation that pre-existed the Appalachian Mountains. When continents of Africa and North America collided, 
It uplifted the Appalachian Mountains and uh, also uplifted these ancient creek beds. Hikers who make it up to Shanty Springs may be startled to learn that the cool pool of water they sip from there actually makes up the headwaters of the Watauga River, which flows west toward the Mississippi. And barely half a mile over the ridge, they'll discover where the Linville River begins and water that flows toward the Atlantic. To see all this for yourself, you'll have to get out and walk. And that can be a daunting task, even on the best of days. I think the first thing I would advise people if they're coming to the park, especially for the first time, is that they should be prepared for rugged hiking, strenuous activity. You really need to be wary of the weather. There are extremes on the mountain itself every day. It's always about at least 10 degrees cooler at the Swinging Bridge than it would be at the gate. Whatever uh, the extremes may be, it never is extremely hot. The warmest temperature that we've ever recorded on Grandfather Mountain is 83 degrees. On the other hand, last winter we had one stretch of seven or eight days when the wind chill at the bridge never got above minus 20 degrees. Few people get to experience these winter extremes, but grandfather's backcountry can be amazingly beautiful if you're willing to invest the time and energy to get there. The spectacular beauty that blooms in spring is made even more so by the mountain's peculiar geology. Well, there are a number of plants and animals that shouldn't be here. They shouldn't be this far south. It's because of the combination of our elevation, our particular geography, and the fact that we were sort of an island during the last ice age. Then when the glaciers retreated, they adapted to this place. There are a number of species that either only live here or that only live here and in a few other places. We're located in the transition zone between northern and southern plants and animals. And because of that, we have a great biological diversity. We have southern species that you know, range all the way down to Georgia, South Carolina. We have northern species that go all the way up to Maine and Canada. We have about 72 species of birds that nest here, that call this place home. Uh, this is also a very important stopover habitat for migrants that go further north from here. Although some have thought Hugh Morton himself came up with the name Grandfather for his mountain, it actually goes back to the 1700s. Perhaps this view off Highway 105 from Boone of what looks, to some anyway, like a reclining old man with a beard, <laughs> inspired the name. But the less known uh, profile, which is an upright profile view, which you can see all those same features very well, and some people argue that that was the original profile view of Grandfather Mountain. It's reassuring that Grandfather is still Grandfather. And even though the backcountry management is changing, visitors are not likely to see much physical change. Grandfather Mountain State Park will continue to protect and preserve those elements and that when people come to this park, that's what they're going to expect to see. A remote, backcountry, more wilderness type of area and experience the elements and nature in its really raw form. We're looking forward to working hand in hand with the North Carolina State Parks. Also, the fact that we're now a nonprofit corporation means that every dime of everybody's admission is going to be used on the mountain to help preserve it and to better show people what there is to offer. Which, of course, is plenty. From drive to the top Grandfather Mountain to the more rugged and wild State Park backcountry. The only question now is, when may we expect you? Thank you.